Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina mursalim ve ala alihi ve sahbihi tefnimi kathira. Allahumma salli ve sallam ala seyyidina Muhammed fa cimhil ma ukle u kha cimhil ma sabakana shal haq bil haq wal hadi ila siratikal mustaqim ve ala alihi haqqi kadrihi ve mekdalihi la azim. Assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Tabi insha'Allah we're going to continue with the Masalik Jinan of uh, Sheikh Ahmed Obamba and Baki Rahimahullah. Now, and we find ourselves now continuing with um, Bab of, uh, of Dhikr, of Fasufi Dhikr. Now, so as I find my place on my computer. Um, no. Tell you, so the last section we did was uh, the, on the weird. Okay, and so the weird, I uh, skipped it. Nah. Tell you. So we did the word, and now he moves on to dhikr. And he says, with him, Allah, Amma dawamu dhikri fahwa akbaru min kulli ma kana muridu yuksiru. Nah. And he says, so for dhikr, Amma dawamu dhikri. Okay, that's for the, the regular performance of dhikr. I mean, that you do dhikr always, dawam. Ala dawam means uh, you're doing it consistently. Fahwa akbaru min kuli makana muridu yuksiru. That it is indeed the best deed. It's the greatest deed. Wa akbaru, okay, min kuli makana muridu yuksiru. It's the best deed for the murid to devote himself to. Meaning for the seeker, the spiritual wayfarer, is the best action that we can do in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best dhikr, of course, is the Quran. And read the recitation and reading the Quran, reflecting and pondering over the meanings in the ayat of the Quran. This is the best dhikr. Along with the weird that we just covered, the awrad, the formulas of litanies that we do in the morning and the evening or throughout the day. Um, this is the best because this is what we were created to do. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the collective genuine int illa la ya'budun, that we, he, he, that Allah created mankind and jinn for nothing but to worship him alone. So by doing dhikr, this is where we're, we're in constant seeking and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a reminder for us that in our busy lives that we do wasting time and doing frivolous actions, um, doing things that just have no benefit, then they should be supplanted with dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, now he says that and I say this without being secret, bila ishrari, without being open, okay, uh, without any type of secret or mysterious uh, mysterious words. Wala ubali. Okay, uh, and not having any worry about those who reject it. Wala means not to worry about anything. As it's said by some of the ulama, as advice, kun ma'ala wala tubali. Be with Allah and don't worry about anything else. Wala to Bali. So he says, Wala o Bali, be the will inkari. I'm not worried about anybody who anybody who makes inkar. Inkar is to reject it. Okay, he's not he's not he's not sweating the issue. He's not worried about people who reject it. And there are those groups who who do so. Okay. So he says, Wakulu Wakulu man sa alani fali jawab kabla wala to jadi lu ahla li kitab. Nam. Nam. He says so. 
Vokulu man sa alani. Fali jawab. So any such that would question me, okay, uh, about it, I have in, I have with me fali jawab. I have an answer for them. And he says, Kabla wala tu jadilu ahl al kitab. He says, He says for them to read the verse that the remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing without a doubt. As Allah says, he indicates this ayat and he says, wa Allahi akbar, wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon. In Surah Al-Ankabut. This is the verse that he's speaking about. Wa dhikru Allahi, wa la dhikru Allahi, wa li dhikru Allahi akbar. That the dhikr of Allah is the greatest thing. So those that reject what he's saying here, this is his proof. Allah is aware of what you create. Allah is aware of what you do. Naam. So this is by the nafs of the Quran that dhikr of Allah is the greatest action that the Marie can do. Okay, of course, outside of the obligatory actions, okay, because it's not a wajib to do dhikr, but it's, it's certainly one of the, merit, the, the, the more meritorious things that we can do outside of the obligations, praying five times a day and and uh, So um, this is what he's talking about. Very important, very, very good advice in doing dhikr. And so he says he continues... He says, وَكُوتُ مَنْ تَارَكَ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ لِذِكْرِ غَيْرِهِ فَغُمْرُ اللَّهِ Naam. He says that, um, he says in that, I do assert that whosoever gives up the remembrance of Allah Whoever leaves the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dhikri ghayrihi to the to, to uh, in return for remembering something else, meaning something uh, other thing that occupy your time. Okay, you leave off dhikr of Allah and you go do something other than the than dhikr of Allah. He said, This person is a fool. This person is a fool. Okay, for gumrun. Lahi. Okay? Now, this is the person, Gumrun, Bidon Bagain, Alladi Lam Yujar, Iman Lam Yujaribul Umur. The person who doesn't understand, has, has, he has, he's a fool, he has no understanding of his affairs. Allah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be not to place us among these group, among these group of people. Now, because why would we do the zikr? Why would we? Knowing this, why would we spend our time doing things other than the, the, remembrance, of, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This doesn't mean that we can't, you have to have balance. You have to understand what he's saying here. He's not saying be extreme in anything, but you have to have a balance. And we look, we look at our lives here in the West, this, they lack balance for the most part. We lack balance. Okay? It's usually spending time with uh, and the distractions you have with our cell phones, social media, television, movies, uh, things like this that just have no benefit, and the void of 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 reading Quran, studying, seeking sacred knowledge, doing dhikr of Allah, these type of actions, and at the end of the day, what do we receive? So he's saying that the person who does this, who leaves the dhikr of Allah, for the remembrance of of something else or the the spending time and wasting time with other things is a fool. Now, nah, and he continues. He says, "For kafa kafa yansa, aw yugafilul wara, dhikr aladhi khalakahum wa sawara." Nah, Subhanallah. He says, "For kafa yansa, aw yugafil aw yugafilul wara." He says. Uh, how, how, or what, how can the, the people forget or show heedlessness for the recollection of whom has created them 
and has given them shame. Okay. ذِكْرَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ وَصَوَّرَ The one who created you, who created them. خَلَقَهُمْ وَصَوَّرَ And gave them their form. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, how can we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay, and, I, and being, uh, this person, this type of person is called a ghafil. Okay, it comes from ghafla. Ghafla is heedlessness. So the one who's a ghafil is the one who is heedless. In other words, one who is just forgets. He's just in a state of just heedlessness. And he'll do this type of actions where um, there's no, no benefit. And the ulama of this science are in a disagreement. Uh, Ibn Atta'ilah said that ghafla is the reason, the core reason why people commit sin. Ibn Atta'ilah, who's the author of the Hikam, and his opinion is that ghafla is the reason why people commit sin because once you forget and you become heedless, you forget about Allah subhanahu wa you forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and once this happens, you fall into error, you fall into sin. While Imam Ghazali says la, he disagreed and he said that the core disease is hubud dunya, the love of the world, that causes man and thrusts man into doing wrong. Wallahu alam, this is a difference of opinion. Both are bad. Both are, are both gafla and hubud dunya are, are, are evil and un, unto themselves, and they should be avoided. Now. And he continues, he says, um, وَأَنَّهُ بِدَايَةُ الْوِلَايَةِ وَتَرْكُهُ نِحَايَةُ الْغَوَايَةِ Now, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, وَأَنَّهُ بِدَايَةُ الْوِلَايَةِ Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes, okay, Represents the first step toward wilaya. Wilaya is to be is in this sense is to be a a, a friend of Allah. Saint is usually translated as being a saint. Saintliness. Okay, the awliya are by translation saints, but they're the friends of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah speaks about them in, in in many different situations. Okay. Now, and giving up is the height of gawaya, of being of going astray. Now, now, so leaving the dhikr of Allah, this is the beginning of you going astray. In other words, and by consistently being doing by 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 being in a state of dhikr. As he says in the first line, "Amma dawamu zikru for who akbaru," being a, a consistent state, a perpetual state of zikr of Allah. This is the first step to being a wali of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is where the saint becomes the person becomes Allah becomes the eye by which he sees, he becomes the hand by which he strikes, the feet by which he walks, the ears by which he hears, because he's close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is his. In the lenses that which he sees the world and sees other people. And in a sense, he's free from a lot of the ailment and the isms that plague the society. Because this person is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah, he has a special protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, then he says, Ja'alana ja'anna lallahu min al-ladhina damu bi fikrati alayhi hina. Now, he says, May Allah make us, may Allah rank us among his servants. May Allah make us from among those servants who spend their the whole lifetime in meditation, in dhikr, fikra, okay, and, and, and pondering. Okay, in thinking about the signs of Allah and in repeating his names. Okay, Naam. Damu bi fikratin alayhi hina. This is his dua that Allah make us among those people who are in a consistent and perpetual state of fikra, 
of thinking, pondering, meditation about the meaning of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the signs of Allah, whether they be in the world, whether they be in the Quran, um, even just looking at your own self, as it said in the Johara, is looking at the miracles of the self, of the, of, of the body, the different systems and how the body functions, and pondering over the creator of those functions. Okay, as he said, that we look at ذِكُرَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ وَصَوَّرَ Naam, the one who gave us the form that we have. Okay, this is the height of the people of this station, that they're in a consistent and perpetual state of dhikr. Naam. And this can be done in our busy lives in the West, whatever we're doing, whether we're a truck driver, whether we, we're a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, a carpenter, a plumber, whatever occupation you have, we can always be in a state of dhikr. When we're driving home, we're driving to work, uh, we can always be in a state in our minds of, of saying, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah, or saying prayers and peace upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Or it's just saying the name of Allah consistently. Allah, Allah, Allah. What better, what better words to say? La ilaha illallah. So in our minds, we can always be in a state of perpetual zikr. So he's saying, جَعَلَنَا اللَّهُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ دَامُوا بِفِقْرَةٍ عَلَيْهِ هِنَا May Allah make us from among these people who are in a consistent state of meditation, of fikra. وَخُلُفُ فِي الْأَشْوَارِ وَالْإِشْحَارِ بَيْنَ الْمَشَايَخِ كِرَامِ جَارِ Naam. He says, Now there's a difference of opinion here. He says, وَخُلُفُ the difference of opinion among the ulama of this science, whether this is to be said out loud or in secret. And we, I know we've had the people, we've all heard the different argumentations about this. Saying dhikr out loud in a group, as opposed to saying it silently by yourself. Okay? But here, uh, Ashaq Ahmed Bamba deals with this khilaf. And he said that there are different opinions upon the ulama about this, whether to say it out loud or to say it in a loud voice. وَخُلْفُ فِي الْأَشْوَارِ وَالْإِجْحَارِ بَيْنَ مَشَايَخِ الْكَرَامِ jari. Okay, among the mashayikh al-kharam, meaning that the, 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 the noble shiyukh, the noble masters, the noble teachers, the ulama, the awliya. وَفَدَّلُوا سِرَّ لِبَعْدِ مِنْ وِيَا لِبُعْدِ مِنْ وِيَا وَجَمْعِ فِقْرَةٍ بِهِ in Nuiya. Nah. Some give preference for Fadalu Sira the Bu'din Min Riya. Some ulama say and they give preference to um being silent, allowing the voice. Okay, and their concern is to that you don't fall into Riya. The Bu'din Min Riya. You don't you're not showing off. Okay? And this goes back to the intention of what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in the Malamanu bin Iyat. Okay? That these are judged by intention. That someone can do dhikr out loud with dhikr beads and just, just to show off. Just to show off. So he says, وَفَدَّلُوا سِرَّ لِبُعُدٍ مِنْ رِيَاتِ To be far away from Riyat. وَجَمْعِ فِقْرَةٍ بِهِ in Nuria. Now, and to concentrate better for any that is intending to accomplish dhikr. Some people have it a way where they prefer to say it silently by themselves because they can concentrate much better. And they want to free themselves from riyah, from showing off. Then he says, وَبَعْدُهُمْ فَدَّلَا أَنْ يُجْحَرَا بِهِ and some prefer to say it out loud. 
Some people either say it out loud, okay, or raising the voice. So to transmit the echo, so you can hear other people say it, okay? Um, and that the person, the other people will follow them. In other words, to encourage other people. Because when you're in a group and there's liquor going on and it's consistently being repeated, then you're going to follow along with them. So by you saying it out loud, then you're going to encourage others to say it along with you and to do dhikr at the same time. So this is their argument for that. And of course, this is done without the intention of showing off. If you're showing off, if, if react enters into your heart, then no, you say it by yourself. So you have these two different positions about the issue. He says, for Yahsula. He says, well, um, he says, for whenever someone else happens to do the same, whenever someone else follows you, okay, twofold reward, you get the twofold reward. Um, well, two, a, two, a twofold reward, a double reward will be imparted, okay, owing to you encouraging others to do so. SubhanAllah. He says, وَيَعْخُذَ كُلُّ مِنَ الْحَوَاسِ Moreover, given that all human senses have to take part in the in dhikr. Okay? Because when you're doing dhikr, you, your senses are all part of that. Alright? Um, lahu min dhikri rabbi nasi. Naam. The tongue must take part in it as well, of course. Right? The, the, the senses and, of course, the tongue. All right? Naam. Wa ba'du lit tawsiti fihi ma'la. Ufassilan bayna huma faqala. Aywa. Now, other scholars have adopted the happy medium of, of such divergence in giving to these following particulars. So the argument for, we'll get to this in a minute, the, 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 the argument for saying it out loud, basically he's saying is you encourage others to follow you. And by doing so, you get the reward for doing so. Doing the thing that you're doing and also encouraging others to follow the thing as well. Now, as opposed to saying it silently, where you're freeing from uh, a riya, showing off, and, and you're able to concentrate better. Okay, Both of them are correct, and neither of them are wrong. And he continues, he says, وَبَعْدُ لِلْتَوْسِيْتِ فِيهِ مَا لَا مُفَسِّلًا بَيْنُهُمَا فَقَالَا إِنْ كَانَ خَائِفًا مِنَ الْرِيَاءِ فَحَقُّهُ الْإِشْرَارُ بِالْإِخْفَاءِ now, so other scholars have adopted the medium between the two, saying out loud and saying it silently, okay, of such a divergence in giving to these following things. And he says, if a man fears to fall into riyah, which is ostentation, is translated as, okay, it's better for him to lower his voice. It's better for this person to say it silently or to say it in a voice where only he can hear himself. Okay, so that no one knows what he's doing because you you want to be far away from having any type of showing off, any type of ostentation or riyah. In this situation, it's better to be silent. Right? In kana ka'ifan min al riyai, fahakuhu ishraru bil ikhfai. This is this is what his right. This is what his right. He should do. 
If he fails, we are. Naam. In sawnu fi'lihi anil butlani, yakunu fil ikhfa'i wal khitmani. Naam. For in this case, his act of worship will be safeguarded against being batil, okay? Anil, bat, anil butlani, to being avoided or annulled, okay? Only if fulfilled in discretion and secrecy. The corner of fee ikfai wal kitmani. All right? So this person will be protected from any type of riyah and the dick will bring null and void because of riyah. Now, this is very important, very important. People show off, people love to be praised. Wow, well, mashallah, look at Fulan, look at so and so. And how much dicker he does. He's always doing dicker. And people people like this. This gets into the heart. And people, you know, the nafs, you know, is very strong, very powerful. So this type of, of environment should be avoided. Now, Naam. Amma idha na'a anil riya'i li kuwatin tamkini wal sifai. Naam. Sifai huwa tahara. Tahara tu takunu li kalbi abdu bin gil wa hasid wa shirk. Naam. So he says that, um, but if a man is free from that danger, Amma idha na'a anil riya'i. If you're free from the danger of riya', okay, owing to his firmness, the kuwatin, the kuwatin tamkini, okay, because that he has an inner strength, a type of the kuwatin tamkini, he has an inner strength. He's not susceptible to riya', okay, because he has this type of of strength inwardly, okay, and an uh, inner sense of, of purity was safai. This person, he says, Fahakuhu Jahru Bila Kafai Linaili Faida Chil Iktidai. This person, his duty is to raise his voice and say the thicker out loud. So that you can other people uh, uh, can benefit from him by imitating him. Nah, this is good advice, subhanAllah. So the person who's not susceptible to ostentation in riyah, you should say it out loud so that you encourage others to do so. And this is the benefit of groups of dhikr. People are against dhikr groups, dhikr circles, they, they say. Halakat the dhikr. Okay, but this is the, the benefit. Because some people aren't as strong and disciplined as other people. So they need to have that group to keep them, to keep them strong, keep them in the action of, of uh, to keep them from falling off or going astray. And this is the group mentality. And when this happens, if it's done without riyah and purity of intention, subhanAllah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. Naam. So he says, وَهْوَ الْإِخْتِيَارُ شَيْخِنَ الْمُخْتَارِ عَلَيْهِ رِدْوَانُ إِلَاهِ الْبَارِ Naam. So this is the opinion of Sheikh Mutar Khunti. Okay, the Sheikh of the, of the, of the, of Mauritania, the great Qadri, Qadri Sheikh. Okay. Naam. فَهُوَ الْإِخْتِيَارُ شَيْخِنَ الْمُخْتَارِ عَلَيْهِ رِدْوَانُ May Allah be pleased with him. May Allah be pleased with him. Naam. And he continues, Fandur Akhi fi Junna til Muridi, Le Sheikh in Al Khalifa til Rashidi. So he says, Look at, um, refer to, he says, Refer my brother to the Junna til Muridi. This is the book, the shield of the, of the, of the Murid from uh, Sheikh til Khalifa. Khalifa Tid Rashid, and he's talking about uh, uh, who was Sheikh Muhammad Khalifa. Naam. This is the book that he wrote. 
where he's getting this advice from. So Sheikh Ahmed Obama here is giving us the source of where he's getting this advice. وَأُدُّ مِنْ أَدَابِ ذِكْرِ ذَاكِرِ جُلُوسُ عَبْدٍ فِي جُلُوسُ عَبْدٍ فِي مَكَانِ طَاهِرِ نعم فَانْذُرْ عُدُّ نعم Likewise counted, uh, counted also among the rules of ذِكْرِ وَأُدُّ مِنْ أَدَابِ ذِكْرِ ذَاكِرِ جُلُوسُ عَبْدٍ so this is the adab of dhikr. He goes now into the adab of dhikr. And he says that uh, the, the, what's counted among the adab of dhikr, or the one who's doing dhikr, is to sit in a place that is tahir, that is clean. Performing dhikr in a clean place, in other words. Finding a clean place to do the dhikr. Mustaqbila kiblati that to Rabbi, our Mutawari Khan, Kamansalla Fai. Now, so this is, he says also, to face the Qibla. So to sit in a clean place, facing the Qibla. Now, that to that to Rabbi, our Mutawari Mutawari Khan. This is sitting down. Cross-legged, okay, like you would um, doing the prayer, okay, sitting down cross-legged or sitting on the ground like you would when you're sitting with a, a, a teacher or something, okay, and saying the dhikr in this manner. This is from the adab of the the one, the zakir, the one who does the dhikr. Nah. So it's one thing to know to do the dhikr. And so he's telling us how to do it. They have the adab. And when you observe the adab, these particular adab, then you get barakah for them. Now, he continues, Tayyiba ra'ihati is la takhlu majalisu dhikri idha ma tajlu. Allah. He says, um, okay, um, wearing good scent, good oils, perfume yourself, okay, uh, okay, wearing good scent where the places of dhikr are being performed. Naam. Okay, on the places, because these are the places where the angels frequent. The angels are sit and they come and they listen. Okay. And the believing jinn as well. The believing jinn. Okay. That they come to listen as agreed upon by the ijma of the ulama. Because jinn can be good and jinn can be evil. Jinn can be disbelievers and jinn can be believers. And so he's saying the angels and the believing jinn, the Muslim jinn, they come and they listen to the dhikr. So these faces should be clean. They should be perfumed with good oils, good scents. Okay? Incense, burning, you can put the incense on your body, on your clothes, or you can burn the scents where this is um, the angels come and the, the, the good jinn and the angels come and listen to the dhikr. This is all by, by, by ujma of the, of the ulama. Naam. And he continues. وَأُدَّ إِخْلَاصَ الْفَتَاءَ بِتَسْفِيَةَ أَذْكَارِهِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَوْبٍ فَدْرِيَةَ Naam. And belong also to the dhikr. Okay. This is part of the adab as well. 
is the ikhlas, sincerity. Also to the dhikr is the entire dedication of the deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincerity in seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, now. أَذْكَارِهِ min kulli shobin fadriya. The servant has to be prevent nothing that is not proper to mix within that. Okay, not mixing anything other than what you're doing. Not being distracted by other things. Okay, focusing on what you're doing and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن تَكُونْ مُبْتَدِئًا فَالنَّفْيُ أَوْلَى مَعَادْ تَعْذِيمِ يَا أَخِيُّ Allah. If you are a beginner, if you are a beginner in the type of action and doing the dhikr, the phrase of negation of falsehood are more suitable to you. Okay, meaning, as he says, أَوْلَى مَعَادْ تَعْذِيمِ يَا أَخِيُّ فَالْنَفِيُّ uh, which is the phrase of negation? Bika bila ilaha illallahu wal muntahi muktasirun billahu. Now, listen closely of what he's saying here. The phrase of negation, such as la ilaha illallah. As for what is experienced in dhikr, he may content himself in repeating Allah. Okay? Muktasirun billahu. So the beginner, if he doesn't have a weird, people say, well, how, what's, I don't have a weird. How do I start the dhikr? If you're a beginner in this, it's enough to, to say la ilaha illallah over and over. Or just the lafz jalala. Allah, Allah, Allah. This is enough. Okay? This is enough. More awrad that were given you know, you have more different litanies that you have that are said by particular uh, tariqa or individuals that it can be said, but that's more complex. But if you're just a beginner, then this is enough. To say la ilaha illallah a hundred times, okay, or more. To say Allah's name a hundred times or more. This is enough. This is what he's saying. Nah. So this is a long, uh, this is a long uh, section in this book here. As you can see, he continues on and on because it's important. Dhikr is the crux of Tassovov right here. So our time is up. We're going to stop here because we're going to do it in parts. Inshallah. So we, uh, the last line, Bika bila ilaha illallahu wal muntahi muqtasirun billahu. Nah. So we're going to stop here. That was line number uh, 324. So then we'll, we'll begin on line number 325. Uh, Allah. So we begin here in the next class video, inshallah. If you have any questions and you know what to do, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة العما يشفون وسلام على مرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته